Hello everyone, myself Dr. Roman Kumar, Consultant Pediatrician and today we are going to discuss a clinical case presentation of hemolytic anemia. This case presentation will be helpful for UG, for UGS students who are going to appear in their pediatrics practical examination. So let us begin this case. So uh, this is Miss XYZ, 14 years aged female child daughter of Mr. Sardar and Mrs. Rani. This is a hypothetical name. A product of non-consanguous marriage hailing from Purulia, West Bengal was admitted in departments of pediatrics on 1st April 2023 and examined on 6th April uh, 2023. Informant being father who is reliable. Patient was admitted from OPD with presenting complaint of progressive pallor and generalized weakness, fatigability since 5 days and breathing difficulty on exertion since 2 days. History of presenting illness, patient is a known case of hematological disorder coming for regular blood transfusion. My patient was apparently well 5 days back, then she developed generalized weakness and progressive pallor. Weakness and fatigability was initially on heavy exercise and work which progressed being present uh, on daily routine activities. She also complained of uh, breathing difficulty which was present initially on exertion like climbing stairs and running and relieved on taking rest. There was no history of fever swelling over the body or bleeding from any site. No history of yellow discoloration of urine or sclera. There was no history of abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and hematemesis or melina. There was no history of pain in legs, abdominal pain, headache, or convulsions. No history of palpitation, tachypnea, or edema. Treatment history. She is receiving tablet for white and deferagirox. Chelation therapy was started at 2 years of age. No other medications uh, was given to the child. For present complaints, he consulted local doctor who referred for better treatment to our hospital. Past history, she is a known case of hematological disorder diagnosed at the age of 11 months when she presented with fever, irritability and crying off and on for 10 days. There is history of repeated blood transfusion from the age of 11 months at 4 to 6 weeks interval till date total transfusion are 108 otherwise no significant past medical or surgical history no history of major trauma leading to blood loss and contact history no history of contact with tuberculosis covid or hiv patient is there antenatal history mother received antenatal visits two doses of tetanus toxoid and iron and folic acid supplementation was given her natal postnatal events were uneventful Birth weight was 2.8 kg. Baby cried immediately after birth. There is no history of NICU hospitalization, no history of neonatal jaundice. Developmental history she has attained all milestones as per age, good scholastic performance. Then, immunization history as per national immunization schedule, till 10 years of age, she is immunized. BCG scar was present on left arm. Then personal history, she is a school going class 9 students, have good relation with peers, friends and family. She has normal bowel bladder habit and normal sleep pattern. Menstrual history, her cycle, uh, she has a regular cycle with normal blood flow. Uh, age of menarche was at 12 years and her periods uh, last for 4 to 5 days with comes at 28 to 30 days interval. Uh, note, note any associated uh, severe pain or passage of blood clots during menstruation. And coming to feeding and dietary history, she received exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months followed by complementary feeding for 2 years of age. On current dietary recall, she receives 1770 kilocalorie against expected of 1900 kilocalorie. Her daily protein intake is 35 gram against expected of 40 gram with a calorie deficit of 130 kilocalorie and protein deficit of 5 gram. Coming to family history, uh, uh, she has uh, two younger uh, 
brother and sisters her age is 14 years and she has a younger sister of 10 years of age and a younger um, brother of 8 years of age uh, no history of similar illness in other family members no history of hypertension diabetes mellitus tuberculosis or seizure disorder in the family no history of a splenectomy or cholecystectomy or other surgery in family is present then coming to socioeconomic history uh, five membered family lives in pakka house in a well lighted and well ventilated house uh, the source of drinking water is from hand pump uh, family practices closed air sanitation practices and father is head of the family and only earning member of the family total family income is rupees 11000 per month according to kupu swami scale she belongs to lower upper lower class coming to examination my patient is conscious cooperative and well oriented to time person and place lying supine comfortably on examination couch with arms on the side and IV cannula over right hand. Her built and nutrition are average. Uh, coming to vitals, temperature is 98.4 degree Fahrenheit taken in left axilla with digital thermometer. Pulse is 88 per minute, regular in rhythm, volume, normal in character. There is no radio radial or radio femoral delay. Her blood pressure is 110 by 60 mm of mercury, measured in right brachial artery in sitting position. Uh, oxygen saturation is 94 percent at room air and her respiratory rate is 16 breaths per minute coming to general examination pilar is present ictus cyanosis clubbing are absent there is no significant lymphadenopathy no edema and no raised gvp coming to head to toe examination head has frontal washing in shape normal size and symmetry no facial asymmetry no uh, her nasal labial folds are normal there is no ptosis squint or squint in eyes eye uh, appears to be normal nose is normal uh, coming to oral cavity examination there is malocclusion of teeth malar prominence skin and appendages are normal uh, her hairs normal in color and abundance and her back and spine are normal Anthropometry, her weight is 40 kg which lies between 25th and 50th percentile. Height is 140 cm which is less than 3rd percentile with her per segment is to lower segment ratio equal to 1 and body mass index being 20.4 kg per meter square. And uh, coming to systemic examination on par abdomen examination on inspection abdomen is distended in left hypochondrium umbilicus is central and inverted corresponding quadrants of uh, abdomen are moving equally with respiration there is no any venous prominence or scar marks her hernia orifices and genitalia are normal on palpation on superficial palpation there is no rise in local temperature no tenderness on deep palpation there is a palpable mass in right hypochondrium which moves with respiration, form in consistency, smooth in surface, sharp border, 8 cm below right coaster margin, suggestive of liver. A mass is also palpable in left hypochondrium, moves with respiration, non-tender, form in consistency, smooth surface, sharp border of 10 cm below coaster margin, a splenic notch was appreciated, which is suggestive of mass being splain. Coming to auscultation, normal bowel sounds audible and on examination of other system, cardiovascular system, both heart sounds S1, S2 audible, ejection systolic murmur over the precordium was audible, there is no raised JVP. On respiratory system examination, normal vesicular breath sounds heard, bilateral equal air entry is present, no added sounds were audible and on central nervous system examination, her higher mental functions are normal and there is no motor or sensory deficit. So coming to case summary, a 14 year old female child presenting with pallor and EG fatigability on examination, pallor present with hemolytic phases along with splenohepatomegaly with growth retardation and history of recurrent blood transfusion 
दिस इज ए केस ऑफ क्रोनिक हेमोलिटिक एनीमिया विदाउट एनी कॉम्प्लिकेशन मोस्ट प्रोबेबली ट्रांसफ्यूजन डिपेंडेंट थैलेमिया मेजर सो दिस इज इन नट सेल अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ थैलेमिया मेजर पेशेंट and in this way you have to present a case this may not be an ideal case but you have to mention all things in these segments and with this much of detail at least uh, in dietary history you have uh, if time permits you have to write a uh, whole uh, diet chart like in the morning she took uh, what is in breakfast and what in lunch and what in dinner and then you have to convert it into in terms of calorie and protein intake and then calculate i have due to paucity of time i have left that part but this is uh, in nut cell uh, a history of a case of chronic hemolytic anemia and once you have presented the case then your viva will start or sometimes the examiner uh, may ask in between your case presentation so best of luck for your exams uh, i think this video will be useful for your case presentation thank you very much